This video has been developed by the Women's and Men's Health Physiotherapy team at Oxford University Hospitals. It is designed to provide some initial information and advice for the management of rectus diastasis. This video is not designed to be a standalone treatment, but to provide part of your physiotherapy management. If you've been referred to our team, you'll be followed up by a physiotherapist to discuss your symptoms and management further. Our contact details are provided at the end of this video should you have any questions regarding this information. Hi, I'm Beth and I'm part of the Women's and Men's Health Physiotherapy team at the Oxford University Hospitals. You've received this video as either your midwife, doctor or one of our physiotherapy team has identified that you might be experiencing rectidiastasis. The purpose of this video is to go through the initial education and advice for the treatment of rectidiastasis, as well as to answer some frequently asked questions. So what actually is rectidiastasis? Rectidiastasis is known by several different terms including diastasis rectus abdominis and is commonly shortened to DRAM or DRA, but all of these terms are used to describe the widening and thinning of the connective tissue strip down the middle of your abdomen called your linear alba. Let's have a look at the anatomy to understand this better. We have four layers of abdominal muscles. The most outer layer are our rectus abdominis muscles, which are commonly referred to as the six-pack muscles. The linear alba connects the two sides of the rectus abdominis. Widening and thinning of both our abdominal muscles and the linear alba occurs during pregnancy in order to accommodate the growing baby. Some degree of separation or widening of the linear alba is completely normal after pregnancy. A separation or rectodiastasis is diagnosed when the linear alba has stretched to more than two fingers widths. One key thing to highlight is there's very rarely any damage or tearing of the tissues as commonly thought. Due to the hormonal changes associated with pregnancy, there's actually a softening of the connective tissue throughout the body, including the linear alba. This actually helps promote the stretching occurring and prevents damage from taking place. So how common is rectodiastasis and how does it recover? As it is a natural process of pregnancy, research suggests that up to 100% of women will demonstrate erectodiastasis at 35 weeks pregnant. However, this isn't always visible due to the baby filling the space. Often, a small erectodiastasis resolves by itself within 4 to 8 weeks of delivery as part of the normal postnatal recovery process. About 1 in 3 women will require physiotherapy treatment for their diastasis. Although your physiotherapist will monitor the degree of separation between the rectus abdominis, it isn't the main focus of our treatment. Research demonstrates that by improving the tone and tension of the linear alba through a progressive strengthening program for your tummy muscles actually helps to improve functionability to a greater degree. Therefore, physiotherapy will focus on a progressive strengthening program and gradual reintroduction of appropriate activities. As part of your physiotherapy appointment, a thorough examination will take place. However, in the next part of this video, we're actually going to show you how to perform a self-assessment of your tummy. This can help you to better understand how your tummy is currently working. Start in lying with your knees bent, feet resting on the floor and your t-shirt lifted so that you can clearly access the full length of your tummy. Using one hand with two or three fingers, softly feel all the way down this length. You're feeling for how springy it feels, as well, as well as whether you can feel the borders of both of the rectus abdominis muscles on either side. Note any areas that are more or less springy, or that you can feel to a deeper depth. We're then going to review the linear alba again, but this time whilst performing a small chin tuck, by lifting the head a small way off the floor. Just as we did before, slowly feel your way down the length of the linear alba again. This time you're looking for any changes in comparison to what you could feel during your last assessment. You may feel an increase in tension or you may reach a section that doesn't feel as tense. Then finally, feel how the tension changes as you slowly lower your head back down. It is important to note these observations as you can use them for comparison over time and also to discuss with your physiotherapist. Another aspect to note when self-assessing is if you feel or see doming occurring. Doming is the formation of a dome-like bulge at any point along the linear alba down the middle of the abdomen. It forms when the connective tissue between the rectus abdominis muscles is having trouble handling higher pressures within the abdomen. It is most common to notice some doming when getting in and out of bed. In this diagram, the picture on the left illustrates a lying position. On the right, you can see the tummy doming, which might happen, for example, when going from lying to sitting. You may also identify doming during general daily activities. It's important to note these activities and also see if you can find a way to temporarily change them just while we're continuing to build some strength. For example, many of those experiencing rectidiastasis diastasis experience doming when getting in and out of bed due to the increased abdominal pressure generated when sitting up or down. 
To avoid this, try sitting down on the edge of the bed and then lowering yourself onto your elbow into side lying. To get out of bed, try the reverse of this. Many women also experience doming with events such as coughing, sneezing or lifting where changing the activity isn't always possible. With coughing and sneezing, try using your hand over your tummy to provide some support and prevent the doming occurring. Where possible, try to avoid lifting, particularly any heavy lifting. In the next section, we will go over the strengthening exercises for the deep abdominals and pelvic floor. You could also try to gently tighten these muscles with the above activities in order to provide some support. We've talked a lot about the importance of strengthening the tummy muscles and how this in turn helps to improve rectodiastasis. The abdomen consists of various layers of muscles which all work together to provide strength and control around the pelvis and lower spine. It is important that these muscles are able to work together effectively and therefore it is essential that we are able to perform the correct technique for strengthening them. In the next part of this video we are going to discuss and demonstrate how to effectively contract the deep tummy muscles. A good position to start exercising these muscles is actually on your hands and knees. Once in position we are going to slowly lift up through the back arching all the way to the ceiling and then slowly reverse the opposite way and let the tummy go down towards the floor. Then slowly come to a mid position between those two extremes where we reach a lovely flat back position. Next we're going to focus on the tummy muscles that are just underneath your belly button. I want you to let them go, let them relax down towards the floor. Next on the breath we're going to take a breath in and on the breath out we're going to think about drawing those tummy muscles up towards the spine. We're going to hold for five to ten seconds and slowly relax that down and repeat, drawing up again for five to ten seconds and let go once more, drawing up and let go. The aim is to complete this five to ten repetitions and complete up to three times a day. When you're comfortable and happy with the, the technique you can either complete it in sitting, standing or lying. When able and confident, we encourage you to use your deep tummy muscles during daily activities. This involves contracting the deep tummy muscles during activities that increase pressure within the abdomen. This includes activities such as standing up from sitting, lifting and carrying. Pelvic floor muscle strengthening. Additionally to the deep abdominal muscles, strengthening the pelvic floor is also important as they work closely together to provide strength and control around the pelvis and lower back. Alongside this video, you'll have received a link to our pelvic floor muscle strengthening exercise video. They are essential to the treatment of rectodiastasis, diastasis and therefore we ask that you watch this video and begin to establish a gentle strengthening routine to start your recovery process. For the first six to eight weeks after giving birth, your body is working hard to recover and, and adjusting to the many changes taking place. General recovery advice includes avoiding taxing activities during this period to help promote recovery and healing. For the first six weeks, we advise gradually building up your walking tolerance at a comfortable pace, as well as completing the pelvic floor and deep abdominal muscle strengthening exercises. Generally, from six weeks onwards, you can return to light activities such as swimming, pilates and yoga, and impact activities can be restarted from around 12 weeks onwards. Your physiotherapist will be able to advise you on appropriate activities depending on the level of recovery they see on your assessment and as long as you aren't experiencing any issues with pelvic floor dysfunction such as urinary leaking or any heaviness sensation within the vagina. When it comes to treating rectodiastasis, unfortunately there isn't a quick fix. We have to progressively work on building the strength and control around the abdomen. Your physiotherapist will be able to facilitate this and progressively alter your programme depending on your progress. Before we finish, let's review some of the key points that we have discussed today. Firstly, it is completely normal for the abdominal muscles and linear alba to stretch during pregnancy and very common to have some separation following birth. Rectodiastasis often recovers within four to eight weeks following birth and one in three women will need some physiotherapy management. Doming can occur with some activities and we want to avoid this where possible. This means you may need to modify some daily activities such as getting into and out of bed. We also recommend trying to avoid some activities such as heavy lifting. You can start some gentle strengthening exercises for the deep abdominal and pelvic floor muscles. And lastly, make sure you gradually return to exercise, allowing time for your body to recover. We now ask that you take the information and exercise provided in this video and the accompanying pelvic floor strengthening videos and work to establish a routine that works for you. Following this, your progress will be reviewed at your one-to-one -one appointment with one of our physiotherapy team where they'll be able to advise you on the next stage of your treatment.